Yeah, there's something sexy about wind. Yeah, well, should we try it together? You ready? Somebody just came. I think we just gave each other a blowjob. <laughs> yeah, that's right. You think that's where it started? You're riding down the Harland Highway. All right, hold tight on the Harland Highway show. Harland Williams. I have, I have one guitar. Um, what happened is I was, I was doing a gig somewhere. And uh, this guy, I was, I went, after the gig, I went to like this, this nightclub and this guy walked up to me and he goes, uh, Mr. Williams. And I go, yeah. He goes, uh, do you play guitar? And I go, no, I don't. Why am I doing a Southern voice yeah, for yeah, my yeah, own yeah, voice? Yeah. I said, no, I don't. <laughs> what the? Dude, I went in too deep. I went in too deep, yeah, bro. Yeah, I like it though. I like it. Yeah, yeah. Commitment. What I said is, no, I don't. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that was weird. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> and uh, that was really scary. Yeah, yeah. Like I almost felt I've got Meryl streeped myself. Yeah. I went in deep. So I said, no, I don't play guitar. And he goes, well, he goes, I, I own a, a guitar company. We make our own guitars. And my brother, I did it with my brother, and he passed away a month ago. And we loved what you do. And I want you to have this guitar. He gave me a brand new guitar in a case. I said, I said, bro, I don't play. It's a great gesture. He goes, yeah. but my brother loves you. And I just saw it in his eyes. He, and I just went, give me the guitar. Yeah, 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 yeah. And so now I just kind of keep it in the studio if someone wants to play. Do you play at all? I play at the end of every one of my sets. Oh, so, okay. So, so wow. I do, I do like a... Wait, let me ask that again. Okay. Do you play guitar? I play play at the end of every one of my sets i'm gonna ask you again yeah yes do you play guitar yeah i play guitar there see that voice yeah <laughs> it feels better when you slip into that yeah voice. that's right yeah I play all right guitar. speaking of music let's play the theme music I'm excited and uh ladies and gentlemen here we are on the harland highway podcast and what a guest i have today uh josh wolf is here and a comedian, stand-up comedian, comedian in general, funny person, writer, yeah, actor. Mm -hmm. uh, do you still do taxidermy or no? Yeah, but only on squirrels. Oh, okay. Squirrel taxidermist. Mm -hmm. Yep. And pottery or no? Am I thinking of the other Josh Wolf? No, I do, I've taken pottery. a pottery class, and okay. I and I knit. Oh wow! I didn't. I didn't know that part. Yeah, I'll put those sleeves back on for you. <laughs> wow! Too soon. <laughs> have you ever done like in pottery? Have you ever had done that thing where a guy comes in behind you with no shirt and like puts his arms around you while you're doing the pottery wheel thing? In pottery, have I done that? Yeah. No, not in pottery. But in taxidermy, like you're stuffing yeah. a squirrel mm -hmm. and a guy, yeah, 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 yeah. comes behind you. Always and helps. good to have a couple extra thumbs in taxidermy. Yeah, so you have a, you have the guy yeah. come behind you and do some stuffing. Important for him to be shirtless, right? Yeah, but just so we're clear, he's behind you and he's stuffing. Yeah, but he's just stuffing the squirrel. Okay, okay. Well, I think our audience can come to their own conclusions if you. Sure. I don't know why you want to bully my audience. Yeah, no, I I don't want to tell them what to think. Well, I think you just did, and yeah. uh, you know, you're telling them that he only stuffs the squirrel. But I think a lot of the audience might have been picturing something else. Yeah. Well, listen, shirt on, pants only off for dinner. We don't do pants off for the taxidermy. You've never taken, you've never stuffed a squirrel pantless. I'm pantless. You're pantless, but the guy behind yeah, you, I mean, the don't, ghost guy. Don't the, you know how it goes? Oh, I, I don't do that. I don't stuff. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, my stuffers out there, they, they know what the deal is. The stuffers know what to stuff. You're supposed to be... The person behind you, shirtless, skin from the waist up, you skin from the waist down, but no skin, skin. Wow. Yeah. I didn't know it was so It's the rules of taxidermy, dude. Dude, you know, did you go to DeVry or something? Or I, went what? To, I went to Tommy's taxidermy school. Oh, Tommy's? Yeah. Down on Melrose? Yeah, dude. Right oh. next to the bartending school. He's got a bartending yeah. school and a taxidermy school right next to it. Oh, my God. Wow. Yeah. Well, I, think, you, I saw a picture of you up in the bartending school. 
Well, I know uh, Tommy. Oh, got it. I got was it. down visiting, but I, I didn't, I didn't take the class. I you didn't, didn't. Yeah, I, okay. I'm, I'm not good at mixing drinks. I one time I, uh, I, I mixed up a Sex on the Beach for someone, mm-hmm. and uh, she got crabs. Oh yeah, that'll happen. Yeah. I, and then one time I made another guy an orgasm, mm-hmm. and uh, it went right in his eye. Yeah, that at least it wasn't on your face. <laughs> right. It, yeah. it wasn't. No. Dude, it wasn't. Have you ever... I swear it wasn't. Have you... You know, the worst part about the sex on the beach, besides the the sand... Yeah. Yeah. Um, is it doesn't taste good. It doesn't? No. I've never had a sex on the beach. It's sticky. Is it? Yeah, I don't like it. Have you ever f- had physical sex on the beach? Yeah. Oh, was that sticky? It was terrible. What happened? Well... The sand issue was was le- legit, but not only that, yeah. you know what I hadn't thought of is like sand, like your knees, my knees had like burn, like r- burn. On. Oh, like sand burn? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, because so, it's like sandpaper yeah, you're when doing you're doing that. The yeah. friction. I, I imagine it is a lot like sandpaper. Yeah. So you chapped your knees. Yeah, and she she had on her back the same thing I had on my knees. Oh, so wow. it wasn't good. It wasn't great. And then, yeah, it, it, it wasn't great. It wasn't great. I had a buddy who had sex on the beach in Fiji. And when he got back to the hotel, uh, he had a, a sea urchin stuck to his ass. He didn't know. Really? Yeah. Where was he? How close to the water was he? He was right at the edge where the, yeah. just where, where the water like trickles in, where the waves just push in. And you got to. By the way, that would distract me. Yeah. I, I don't. I don't like if I was Ugh. having sex with somebody and then water was, con- mm. yeah, that, that wouldn't. I wouldn't think I would like that. Yeah, I, I mean, no, I don't think I. Yeah, would. I was in Italy. You know that famous fountain with the horses, where the horses are spitting the water. I had the, sex with a girl in that fountain in Italy. Huge tourist attraction. People were throwing pennies at us and coins. <laughs> let me ask you a question. Well, if honestly, laugh. do I look like a guy who's familiar with the fountains in Italy? Yeah. Right. <laughs> Yeah, 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 yeah. You were like, you know that fountain in Italy? Yeah. I'm like, that. Uh, you're talking. Let it's- me rephrase it. You, 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 you know the fountain in the lobby at Olive Garden? Yeah, dude, yeah. I know that. Okay, okay. There we go. There's your Italy. <laughs> I know that fountain way better. By than the that. way, bro, speaking of food, you got the Terry Black's barbecue rib hack guy. Is it, to me, the best barbecue? <sighs> so good. The beef- Austin, Texas. The beef rib at the... Is so good. Yeah, I would I would punch a small child f- for these beef ribs. You know what I call it? I call it Terry Jack's barbecue. Do you know who Terry Jack's is? No, but he sounds like an old wrestler. No, he's an old singer from the 70s. He wrote that song. Goodbye to you, my trusted friend. We had joy, we had fun. We, we had, had seasons, seasons in the, the sun. sun. But the wine and the song, now the seasons are... All... So Terry Jacks wrote that hit song. For who? For himself. He sung it. Oh, he sung it. And so whenever I go to Terry Black's, I call it Terry Jacks. And when I'm eating ribs, I pretend I'm eating his ribs. I'm sure there's at least one person at the restaurant who remembers Terry Jack and who would love that. Love right. that story. Love, yeah, yeah, I'm sure. One person from across the restaurant would be like, I know that song. Yeah, so everyone watching probably doesn't even know who the hell I'm talking about. But they are, they love, if I saw somebody mm. at a restaurant singing to themselves while yeah. they were eating, that would be really enjoyable. You know what I love about Terry Jacks, too? Did you get the half rack or the full rack? The baby rack? Or the- I go beef rib. Oh, the big giant ones? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, you know what I do with those? So I go probably to Terry Jack's probably about 30 times a year. I love it. Yeah. And I get the big ribs, and then I'll get the uh, the big, like, the, the full rack of the yeah. baby backs. Instead of tossing the bones out, what I do is I put them in the backyard to bleach in the sun. Yeah. And then I collect all the bones after a few months. I go in the basement, and I build a Tyrannosaurus Rex um skeleton i think that's a great idea yeah and then i charge all the kids in the neighborhood 20 bucks a pop to come into my basement and tell them hey come see the dinosaur kids how big is the dinosaur it goes right through the roof i mean this thing's probably 25 30 feet high how many years did it take you to get enough bones to build the t-rex uh well at the rate i go probably two 
Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Yeah, so, yeah, I like that. Yeah. yeah. That's, I'm and, working on a stegosaurus now. And how are you? How are you making these anatomically correct? Are, is it from Night of the Museum? Is that how you? I just, you just all you got to do is look at a coloring book or mm-hmm. uh, you know just old drawings, yeah. cave paintings. I go to find caves where the cavemen meticulously put uh, graphic, detailed. Yeah. You know, there's one with a stick and an arm, and then perfectly anatomically, almost like the guys who created Jurassic Park were doodling on a cave. They went there first to get yeah, there. Yeah, so I just follow what. What are you? Is any chance of maybe you building a Bigfoot? Because I think, oh, yeah. Oh, wow. That's a good idea. Do you know I interviewed Here we somebody? Go. Here we go, gang. Where Podcast are, just started. Where Here are we go. you with Bigfoot? I'm so well, curious. Well, no need to point. Okay. That's a little, well, I don't know if I like. And not only point the ET, yeah, 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 look at I your gave finger. You, I gave it's you huge. That. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you actually did this. You went. Where are you at? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, like, <laughs> dude, I don't want to go home. Well, okay, listen, just, now you now you know why just, my wife likes me so much. God, very, Donnie did <laughs> over here. Tell me, God, it was a more active <laughs> index finger than it needed to be. I'll, Wait, you yeah. use that on your I, wife? <laughs> e T touch clit. E T touch clit. Come on, guy. Oh, yeah, this this one is probably oh, this is intimidating. Wow. This is an intimidating. I'm gonna start doing this at meetings. Talk about. I'm gonna do this. <laughs> talk about sex on the biatch. God. What if I went into the next meeting and I was like, "Where? What do you think about my idea? What do you think about that?" And they're just like, <laughs> and then they all they all achieve. They just go, oh, oh. <laughs> Good Lord, my child, bless you, my child. God. Yeah, I think, because now I'm laughing because I really think this is something that I do. It is. Now that you pointed it out, I, think, I think I do have it's a little, an active... It's intimidating. <laughs> like, it's, it's, it's a hard one. Like, it... Yeah, I saw your face right away. You were like, what is this? What well, is- have you ever been to the aquarium and, yeah. or even Red Lobster and those fucking yeah. lobsters are yeah. in the thing and they're going like that? You're mm-hmm. like like a, a prodroplegic or what's someone with one a leg? A prodroplegic? What's a one-legged guy? Not a prodroplegic. A I think- project police? No. A, a, a quadriplegic? What's someone with one leg? A, I, got, I think he, a pirate? Okay, <laughs> then you're right. When you're right, you're right, yeah. guy. Hey, I, yeah, you're I right. So. I think pirate is so. The you're right. like a, a pirate lobster with just the one. Yeah. By the way. Yeah. I read something about goldfish the other day. Oh, here we go. Speaking about oh, I aquatic. Like this. Yeah. You know how the the common that uh, goldfish have terrible memories. Yeah. Horrible. Well, horrible. Tur- turned out to be false. As a matter of fact, you can teach goldfish to do things. Like what? How about that? I read an article and somebody was putting... I don't know why anyone would put research into a goldfish memory. Okay. But Interesting. you can train goldfish. And okay. if you can train something, that means it has to have a memory. A memory, yeah. Right? And so remember, the, the memory of a goldfish is now... It's been disproven. They have like decent memories for fish anyways, I guess. What does a goldfish have to remember like? Well... That's a great question. They Wait. probably don't need to. It's not like they're taking a test. Am I on this side of the bowl or this side of the bowl? Yeah. Um, have you ever wondered what it would like to have eyes on the side of your head instead of straight ahead? Is that oh. something that you might enjoy more over here? Not as far as trying to have sex with other people because yeah. I think that would be a problem. Yeah. But just walking around life more of a side. Yeah. View as opposed to like a straight on. Yeah, I think that would make driving tough. Yeah, or, I mean, you would know when to switch lanes. Yeah, that's true. That would be easier. That's true. One of these over here. I yeah. think, um, look, I, I actually don't think by itself is good. Yeah. But if you were hiking, one person with side eyes isn't terrible. Right. Do you know what I mean? Just to have side everything, eye, yeah. everything covered. Yeah, yeah. What's a good job where you'd need to see out of the side of your head? Um, yeah, not too many. Uh, where? Oh, you know what? When I was younger, I used to pick cucumbers. Okay. And, no, still straight ahead. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I'll tell you a good application for... Um, I, I, I buy the goldfish. I always keep three or four on hand. They're, they're sort of the bigger ones, mm-hmm. and they've got the giant bubble eyes. Mm-hmm. Have you seen the ones that got, like, giant bubble eyes mm-hmm. 
And I always keep four or five in the bowl because every now and then the wife likes to do tea bagging. Yeah. And sometimes I'm just not in the mood. Mm -hmm. I'm tired. I've had a long day at the factory, whatever. So, well, you know, we're in the dark. She wants to tea bag me and I'll just pull one of those goldfish out and just, you know, with the big bubbly eyes and just dip that in and out of her mouth. She doesn't know the difference. Is your nutsack um, wet and clammy? Yeah. And it's, and it's orange. And it, and it, and it drips like that. Yeah. And it's salt. Well, salty probably. Well, they're freshwater fish, but yeah, they're but salty they, by default. I yeah, I, and so your nuts are scaly. They they have scale. well, the eyes don't have the scale. That's the right. thing. They're oh, you just dip and the smoothie. eyes in. You just, well, you're dipping the head in. Mm-hmm. So just it's almost like an underwater ball bag. I'm gonna try that tonight. Whoa, dude! <laughs> Et. <laughs> Now, I, I want to ask you about yeah. your attire today. Well, okay, good. I'm glad you did. Yeah. <laughs> um, did you get a drink, guy? Do you got a... Yeah. yeah. God. <laughs> well, here's the deal. Like, me and you, I think we can say this about me and you. Yeah. We're sort of part city guys, part country guys right like we sort of i've lived in in the city but i've also lived in small towns country towns yep as as, can i say that's the same for you i spent i I went to college in texas i grew up in a small town right yeah 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 i I toured with larry the cable guy for many years right so so i just wanted tonally because i i feel like me and you kind of came from the same background Mm kind of more of that country vibe Mm mm-hmm and I thought, let's let's settle into that, you know? Meanwhile, I'm wearing a shirt that I bought at a unisex, like this is also a woman's shirt. So I might not have dressed the same. That's a woman's shirt. It, it, I bought it in Australia and they were like, that's the rack for men and women. Right. So, so right. I don't know, like, I don't know if that really. Yeah. I mean, I. Although I've seen women wear that shirt. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Where we what what uh, what's the designer name for that one? Do you know? I think the store was uh, S T A I Styes. Maybe I don't remember Styes. I, I was I was it was in Australia and yeah. um, I was a little stony baloney walking around. Yeah, and I was like, I'm gonna walk in there, and I ended up w- with this and a couple other pieces of clothing that I think when I wore them the first time, my wife was like, in the nicest way, where did you buy those? And I said, I got them in Australia. She was like, oh, so we can't return them. <laughs> oh, <well>. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, no. She was like, okay, well, be careful. I, mean, I wouldn't wear those around Did me. she know? Because women have, like, radar for this. Did she know immediately that was a girl's shirt? Yeah, she said, that's a woman. Like, if you look at the wow. cut. Like, yeah. It's- oh, yeah, that's, like, a, almost a dress. Yeah, it's, like, a. That goes right down, like, below your crotch. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah, that's definitely a girl's outfit. Yeah, you're welcome. But I thought, wow. I mean, if I had known, I, I, I would have I would have dressed up. But, no, you sort of, like, just the hat and, yeah. you know, just the way we talk. I think people can feel it. And what I was going to ask you is, like, do you think people, like, need that in their life? Like, the slower kind of country vibe? Is it? Do you think people, like... Is that something people long for? Are people too, like, city-fied, if that's even a word? I think a little bit of everything is good for you. Yeah. That's what I think. I think I agree, because like I said, I had both. Like, yeah. I had a mixture of small, small town, like, one general store and just the locals, and then I grew up in a city as well, so it's nice. I think, honestly, in all, if we're being serious, yeah. like, I think the more of different that you see... Yeah. makes you more tolerant of everything. Like yeah, if yeah, you, yeah. Right? If you stay yeah. in one small little place or one big place, yeah. and that's all you know, anything else outside of that, you're going to have a, probably not a great view of. Yeah. But the more you see, like you've traveled so much, yeah. I'm sure you're like, I don't give a fuck what anybody does. Yeah. Right? I've been everywhere. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm strong with that. I mean, you've seen fountains in Italy. I've, had, I've made love in fountains in Italy. Was it making love? What's the difference? Well, okay, so 
She was three hundred dollars. Yeah. She told me it was love making. Mm-hmm. That's great. Yep. So, three hundred dollars American. Yeah. Wow. So I, if she, you know, I paid for it. Yeah. And she said it was making love. Yeah. Then it wasn't is. just casual sex. Yeah, so then it, then it I don't think someone sense. would lie to me over three hundred when I'm paying for it. I agree with you. I agree with you. That's the true sign of love, right there. Right. Yeah. Three hundred and over. Uh, but you know what I love about the country too is it's sort of a simpler. That's what I, I kind of like about it. It's like the the cities we live in, even though we've tasted both, mm-hmm. everything just goes in slow motion when you're in a small town. And then what? Go. Well, the one thing I will say, yeah. my wife is from a small southern town. Yeah. The pace with which they tell stories. Yeah. Needs to be picked up just a it little. It does, bit. yeah. It needs to be picked yeah. up. And not only that, like <laughs> what I do love about Southern small town Southern stories too is that you'll be like the story might be about whatever. Um the somebody's garden. Yeah. But it's somewhere in the middle of the story, like, now my cousin's son played football. And you're like, what the fuck does that? <laughs> yeah. He was a high, he he was a middle linebacker for the the woman who sold me the seeds, her husband's father was the coach, and you're like this what? Yeah. What? What? what You're are already we doing? lost. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Like yeah. you feel like an inbreed just hearing it. You're just like, why? Sometimes uh, with my wife too, she'll start the story and I'm like, mm. yeah. Put the tractor into fifth gear, <laughs> baby. Well, there's always also that stigma that I, yeah. you know, we always take the crap out of it. So I don't know if you're able to do it, but I thought it might be fun if you and I like took a crack at the old. You might be a redneck I love jokes. It. I love it. I you love know, it. you know yep. how yep. Jeff Foxworthy does those? Sure. We won't do any of his, but I said, before you got it, I said, if you can write a few, I'll mm-hmm. write a few, you write a few. Okay. And we'll go back and forth. All right. And we'll, you want to crack them out? Sure, I got it. All right, you go first. Okay. You, if, and we got to do the setup, too. Right. If okay. you're... Yeah, okay, okay. Yeah, the whole... If your parents couldn't make your high school graduation because they were at their own... You, you might be a redneck. <laughs> if you go to a fancy restaurant and think escargot is a rental car place at the airport, <laughs> you might be a redneck. If you use old teeth as jewelry, <laughs> you might be a redneck. <laughs> If you think a sperm whale is a fat guy that got caught masturbating behind the aquarium, you might be a redneck. If you think mac and cheese is a vegetable, you might Might be be a redneck. redneck. If your sister with steel braces in her mouth gets hung upside down from the gym ceiling at prom and is used as a disco ball, you might be a redneck. If you think Joe Dirt is historically accurate, you might be a redneck. And my last one. If your wife wears a G-string, then shits her pants just to see if it will cut her dump in two. <laughs> You might be a redneck. I got two more. Oh, God, do If em. you think of Eskimo as just a Mexican who got lost, you <laughs> might be a redneck. And the last one I got oh, is... Um, bring it. Where is it? Oh, if your sister is older than your mom, yeah. you <laughs> might be a redneck. redneck. Yeah, I like those. That oh. thong in the dump, dude, is oh, like... Oh, too soon. So good. Yeah. <laughs> Oh my God. But you know what I think too? And I, this is something I'm going to, you know, if, if you can set the timer on your phone for one minute, your, yeah. your stopwatch. Yeah. Cause I'm all about, you know, sort of servicing my viewers. Yeah. That sounds gross, but it isn't. And what happens is, you know, people in the city get wound up. Mm-hmm. They get caught up in their nine to five. They get caught up in the rat race. And I think they forget how calming and therapeutic country life can be. Okay. So I'm going to throw this out there. Do you know how to do any barnyard noises, like animals? I I don't, but I'm willing to give it a shot. So I'm just submitting. We give our folks. You know, some people put white noise at night and they have a fan that calms them down. Yeah. I just say we take our time. We do one minute 
of barnyard noises for the folks just okay. to help. It's therapy. I love it. And tell me when we're going. And I want to let you know, and people who know me know that voices and impersonations right in right in my wheelhouse. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. This is this is gonna be great. So should we announce what the animal is? No, before? I think because we don't we what we want to do is eliminate the human presence uh -huh. and just transport people, make them think they're sitting in a grassy field and in the distance they hear the the critters, okay. the farm critters. Yeah, yeah. And it doesn't have to be constant. We can have some quiet moments where I can even do a wind noise where the wind's blowing through the heather yeah. and the hay. Yeah, the he just heather? Or whatever her name was. Yeah, 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 yeah. So yeah, whenever you ready? you're ready. Okay, you're ready. Here we go. Ah! Ah! Hey there, is that a pig? <laughs> hey, stop fucking your sister. Oh, sorry. That oh, was, what? Oh, no, we're out of a minute. Okay. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> what was that last one? That was just the, the farmer on the. My fault. But I really feel like we nailed that. Right? Didn't that, didn't that feel like you yeah. kind of like. Could definitely go to sleep to that. Right? Yeah. Just on repeat. Like, I think folks watching the podcast, the two or three who watch this, yeah. I think they're going to, you know, just really calming and relaxing. Yeah. I think some of it is, some of it was a little, it, some of it could be masturb masturbatory, I think. Oh, which part do you think? Oh, it's not obvious? No. What What did you feel? What, did some of it arouse you, you mean? Yeah, there was parts of it that felt pretty good. Which one? Well, the wind. <laughs> That really does it for me right there. I've never seen someone with such a pained look on their face when they were doing a wind noise. When they're passing wind? <laughs> All right. You do it more erotic. Or you do your wind, I'll do my wind. But your wind, you were like kind of like in an ecstasy, and I'm. You're right; it's painful for me. Yeah, you're. You're. Oh. Well, see, but I was. I found my wind more. More like era. I did. It was just like. Yeah, there's something sexy about wind. Yeah. Well, should we try it together? You ready? Somebody just came. I think we just gave each other a blowjob. <laughs> yeah, that's right. You think that's where it started? It has always seemed to me such a yeah. weird term. Yeah, blowjob. First of all, I don't like the word job in there. Yeah, it shouldn't be a job. I feel like... It should be a treat, like a blow treat. Something. Or I feel a like gift, a it, blow gift. I feel like it would, it would be more accepted or something that would happen more often if the word job hadn't yeah. been dropped in there. Yeah, because when you, it's not a job when you no. go down on a girl. It's not called like a eating out job. Yeah. It's like a pleasure sort of. By the way, eating out is something we all enjoy. Yeah. It's something that we look forward to eating out. Yeah. But this job situation. Yeah. That's too, uh, yeah, it's too village people. It's, it's too, workman -like. yeah. It's workman-like. It's workman-like. Like you need a, like you need a tool belt. Steel toe boots. Yeah. A helmet. A helmet. Yeah. A maybe, mining, maybe a. A light. Click, click, yeah, yeah. A one belt, of those. a tool belt. Yeah, something electric. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah. like you have to sign a waiver. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? That's a job yeah. where you're working. But and and I, you're right. Blow doesn't, like I remember the first time I heard a kid yell that. I'm not even joking. Yeah. 
I was in high school and some guy yelled, blow me. And I didn't, I didn't know what the hell he meant. Yeah. Like, what do you mean blow you? <laughs> yeah. You know, like we just did. Yeah, like, yeah, I yeah. was like, I, I was so confused. Why is he yelling at that guy about a weather condition? That's right. And when, and, and so both words are not, it's not a blow and it's not, yeah. a, it's not a job. Yeah. It's more like a, it's like a suck treat. Bingo. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, you know, it's it's like uh, I don't know yeah. if those are the right words, but I think yeah. we're in the right ballpark. I tell you, if I go back to Italy and see that girl at the fountain, I'm just gonna. How much for a suck treat? <laughs> oh man! You know what we should do? We should yeah. we should maybe try to push this out as new because they're changing terms all the time. Yeah, everything's all the time, changing. Right? Yeah. People find that terms aren't acceptable anymore. Yeah. And I find the term blowjob not acceptable anymore. Yeah, I don't like it. I don't like it. So I think maybe suck treat yeah. seems, I don't know why those words don't feel great together. Yeah. But I do like treat. Suck treat feels a bit weird. Yeah. Uh, I, but I think we're in the same, we're uh, in the. Blowjob. I, because it is, it's the first word that I'm having trouble yeah. with. Yeah. Blow. It is sucking. Yeah. So it should be suck assignment. Uh, oh, yes. Uh, like a. Uh, it's an ass- no, is that assignment too technical? Sounds maybe? Like, like you're taking it like it's homework. Yeah. Like you've been sent to the principal's office and you yeah. got to go home and do a suck assignment. Opportunity? Suck opportunity. <laughs> yeah. It is an opportunity. It is an opportunity. But it's it, not necessarily romantic or sexual. But opportunity feels very politically correct in that I'm not making you do it. Yeah. This is an opportunity, opportunity for you to better yourself. Right. 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 But is it it's oral, so sucksical? Is that there's a two summary. You, don't, you probably don't want to suckicle in the summer. Yeah, and in the winter, like an oral opportunity. <laughs> oral opportunity is not terrible because that really does. The, it <sighs> says what it is, but it sort of feels like job interview. Read your resume. Yes, I've had several oral <laughs> opportunities <laughs> at my last company, and yeah, you know, yeah. it's a bit. My last boss gave me many oral, oral opportunities. opportunities. Yeah, yeah. 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 You're right. Oral opportunities sounds um, that sounds bad. I listen. I so far suck treat is might be my favorite, <sighs> although it's a little too. Yeah, the hard K sound and T sound, both of them make it a little too yeah. harsh. What about a tonsil T bone? Have you ever seen a car like just T bone yeah. another car? And it, if you can get what it, a tongue lashing. Tongue lashing's good, but that's a term already associated with like with doing this. Well, not th- this. with the mouth. Yeah, yeah you don't like yeah. that part. So it's like yeah. So it's oh. a uh, uh, um a, t- uh, a tonguing, tonguing. No. That's it's got to be its own new. I work. feel like Seven Eleven could get in on Slurpee yes. somewhere. Yeah, Slurpee, <laughs> uh, Slurpee session. Uh, 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 a Slurpee set. Well, no. Not- we might have we might have um, um, uh, copyright issues. Yeah, that's with throwing true. Slurpee in there. I, I really think this. I just think blowjob feels antiquated. Yeah, because truly eating out. When you, if I said to you, "Hey, Harlan, yeah. tonight we should go eat out." Yeah, you'd be like, "That sounds yeah fun." That sounds fun. Yeah, but blowjob. Feels- yeah. What was that? You said suck treat? Is suck that... treat. It was the first one, but it feels... What was the one you sort of liked just a minute ago? Was it Was it suck treat? Uh, oral opportunity. Yeah, that one's still too technical. Yeah. I, 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 I think opportunity feels fun. Yeah. It's the first one. Although you're right, opportunity does feel like something that it feels a little too stuffy. What if it's more like drawn out, like do your job or we're breaking up? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Your turn. Yeah, your turn. How about we just call it a your turn? Yeah. Hey, how about a your turn? Yeah. That I like that. Okay. Yeah. Let's see if we can get that moving. God. If we were the pioneers of your turn, Whew. we'd go down in history. We were talking about earlier about art that you know cements you in history. Yeah. If we were the guys responsible for your turn. Yeah. And your turn also sounds like we could write a pretty funny country song about it. Now it's your turn. Oh my god, I can't believe you said that. Don't you think so? Well, I want that was the next thing I was going to ask you to if we could write a country song. I think we say I think we write your turn. 
I think your turn is a great country song to write. Oh don't, my god! You don't think so? I think here's what we'll do. We okay. both did. We both did. Um, redneck. Uh, the, the the redneck jokes. Yep. So let's write a country song. What's it called? Your turn. Your turn. Or is it your turn? Look, here are the opportunity. We can do your turn. Oral opportunity, which doesn't sound like a country yeah. song. Suck tree feels more hip hop. Uh, <laughs> um, Dude, uh, we're writing your turn. Here we go. Oh, I, I, I don't. Is it tuned? It doesn't matter. Okay, we perfect. can't sing. Yep. We can't. It just has to. You know, blowjobs are messy. Yeah, it yep. doesn't matter if this is messy. Okay, um, your turn. Your turn. Oh, that sounds perfect. Right? Yeah. And remember, this is from a dead guy, so yeah. it'd be nice. Yeah. Did you take it from the dead guy? <laughs> it sounds like You like saw it, a dead yeah. guy and he just took his no, guitar. You were like, you don't need this anymore. It was his brother, but. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, this might bring him back from the grave, but. I, I uh, yeah, let me see. So this was his. Darling, Dar- I love you. I spent a long day at work. I came home kind of early so you could give it a jerk. And here we are together in the bedroom. I did my job. Now it's your turn. So I pulled down my pants and I released the crack in. Put down your hair dryer and get it, it whacking. <laughs> <laughs> What did we say the name of the song was? I forget. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, me too. <laughs> Cause that's <laughs> that's where I would have come in. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> the worst Simon and Garfunkel ever. <laughs> Our only song, and we forget the name of it. Right when it comes to the hook, and yeah. we were like, what is the... Completely yeah. gone. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, this is so funny because yeah. I wrote a, I actually wrote down some lyrics to a country song. It's so funny you ask because I, I wanted us to write a okay, country perfect, song. perfect. And then we can come back to the one we don't know. <laughs> but let me put my peepers on. So okay. what I did is I wanted to write a song about the difference between country guys uh-huh. and city guys, yeah. right? So here's some lyrics. You, Can I you, ask you, by the way, when you put your glasses on, yeah. does it make you feel smarter or older? Older. Me too. I hate it. If, I hate putting them on. I said this to my wife the other day. I said, if uh, I wore them all the time, I wouldn't care. Yeah. But the fact that I got to put them on to see, Ugh. may I fucking hate. And what sucks is I can look, I could be on the highway and see a street sign eight miles away me and too. read it perfectly. Me too. But I can't read something three inches in front of me. How big is the font on your phone? It's the biggest you can get. I picked up my son's phone the other day and I was like, this is a font that's available to humans? And is it like, huge? No, dude. It's like... Tiny. I was like, how can you see that? Yeah. And he saw mine. He was like, what the? F-? Yeah. It's pretty. Like my font right now, I basically get two letters per screen. Yeah. I, you got to do it. You got to get it up there. Yeah. yeah. And like, then you got to put these stupid things on, which I hate. Now they're all foggy because we were laughing so hard. I'll tell you what else. Maybe the thing that I hate the most about getting older is going out to eat and having to turn the light on on my phone to see the fucking, fucking menu. menu. Yeah. Cause, cause, cause you got to wear these too. Yeah. That my wife's always like, just turn the light on your phone. I'm like, I, I won't, I'm just going to assume they have steak on the menu. Right. I'm going to order that. Well, how about this one? You ever, you ever get like the microwave dinner or the soup can or the canned stuff. And on the back, it says, this is how you cook it. And you can't read anything. <laughs> And you just got to throw it in the microwave and guess. I mean, I think that's what you do with microwave food. Anyways, you just put it in there. And gas, like like it doesn't tell you how much time. Oh yeah, and then yeah. sometimes you have to stop it, peel it, stir it. Yeah, do it again. Yeah, Dude. yeah, yeah. You, you, those microwave meals, though, I think it almost doesn't matter. Yeah, you're right. All right okay, so this is a song that I started, and I wrote like the first verse, and then the second verse for you. Okay, and then the chorus. 
And then me and you can write the second verse on the fly because once we do the first two verses, we'll know what the song's about. Yeah, I love it. So basically, it's about the difference between country boys and city boys. Uh huh. So I'll kick it off. Okay. You can play along or I can... What I'm going to do is at the end of the thing, I'm going to cut it together so at the end of the podcast, I'm going to have me and you sing and we'll get all the lines clean. I I love it. I love it. Hey, everybody. Check out my merchandise at harbling.com. Yeah, most people just slap some letters or images on a t-shirt or a hoodie, but not me. Yours truly. Guess what? I draw my own designs at harbling.com. You can see tons of my hand-drawn t-shirts. Uh, you can either buy the original or you can buy a print. And uh, man, oh man, wear them loud and proud. Um, I love making these designs for you guys and uh, keeping it personal. So check out the whole uh, catalog. We got hoodies, we got coffee mugs, we got uh, t-shirts, you name it. It's there at harbling.com. Get your uh, Harland original design wearable art at harbling.com today and uh thank you for your support and i'll just keep the uh the groovy images coming i will tell you one of my favorite things as a child yeah was zipping up my sleeping bag and farting in there with myself you dutched oven yourself yeah 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 yeah, yeah. Oh, not a lot of Jews going into the oven by themselves. Wow, wow, <laughs> wow! But, <laughs> but I would. I'm I'm wow. that kind of guy. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. What inspired you to do that? To Dutch oven yourself? I really love. I for whatever reason really was fond of my own kind of cadence and smell, and it wow. made me laugh. My my dad would even. He said I would hear you laughing. Because I would have a yeah. sleeping bag. I'd like to sleep in a sleeping bag on my bed. You did? Sometimes, yeah. Yeah. And he was like, I, w- I would hear you laughing in your sleeping bag. And I was like, yeah, I was just farting. He was like, that is just like. But he now it makes sense with the career that I chose. Yeah. Because farts are funny. Oh, farts are the best. Anybody that tells me farts isn't funny, they don't understand comedy. Well, the, whoever tells you a fart isn't funny are the same people that will laugh at a fart. Uh, Everyone laughs at a fart. Yeah, 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 yeah. Was your sleeping bag a designer sleeping bag? Like, did it have a pattern on it, or was it just like a, a brown or blue? Or, blue. Because I had a, a sleeping bag when I was a kid. I thought it was the coolest sleeping bag. It had traffic signs all over it, like stop, go, fancy. yield. Yeah, it was pretty, pretty, pretty fancy. That's fancy. Did you? Yeah. I remember my friends. Here's how when I thought you were rich. First, if you had a second refrigerator in your garage. Oh, yeah. Like with soda in it. Oh, like, yeah. That's rich people yeah. shit. But I remember my buddy had a race car bed. You know. It, oh, yeah. And I was like, your bed is like in the shape of something. You must have so much money. But I would have thrown you in there with your fancy sleeping bag. We didn't grow. Did you grow up with money? Uh, we were okay. We did not grow up with money. So like a, like a sleeping bag that had shit on it. Well, what's great about having a race car bed is that you never run out of rubbers. That's right. I mean, there's four. And just in case you need to get out of there. Yeah. There's always a quick getaway. I'd be a good bed for like now, like as an adult. An actual race car bed? Just when you're done, drive her home, drop her off, and you you don't have to mess with getting into your jammies. Just drop oh. her off, drive home, and you're already in bed. And you... What a genius! And the and the bed folds up into a seat, so you can and then you can just fold it back down. Yeah, it's one of those posturepedic beds where it sits up. I mean, if you're looking for retirement money, dude, this might be that might be the now your your bedroom would need a driveway, right? Not necessarily. If you if you're one of those hell riders that can get it up on two wheels, mm, yeah, 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 bring it in, plop it down, plop it down. And if you're doing a lot of uh, intercourse, you're going to mm-hmm. get good at that. That's true. The intercourse or the yeah. driving? You're going to get good at the intercourse? Yeah. That's what I meant. Not that. Oh. When, just out of curiosity, yeah. asking for a friend, how many times do you have to do the intercourse to get good at it? In real life? What do you mean? I don't understand like, the question. You mean in terms of the, the sports, the race car bad, or just in life? In life. How many times do you think you have to do the intercourse <sighs> to get good at it? 
I think you got to probably do it maybe like 20 times. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. What if what if after 20 times you're still not you're still not that good at it? Well, I think your partner would say something. Yeah. And then if you weren't good at it, I don't think you'd know you weren't good at it. Yeah, that's the thing. But it's like I think it always evolves, right? Mm -hmm. Like when you started, when you first lost your virginity, you were probably like awkward and weird and right. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Like you just did it like missionary style. Can I tell you the first time a girl rolled over and got on all fours, I asked her what she was doing. Really? I go, what are you doing? You thought she like dropped her contact lens <laughs> yeah. or something? I was wow. like, I was like, <laughs> I was like, because this is, yeah. look, man, I, I, we, I didn't grow up in an era where porn was super accessible. Right. Yeah. Right? So positions. You didn't know positions. Mm, yeah. No, 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 no. So yeah. when she rolled over, I said, what are you doing? And she said, she was like, what do you mean? I go, what, what do you, what, like, and she goes, we're, we do a doggy. Oh, wow. And I thought that was like another term for anal. And I, at the time in my life, didn't, I was like, I don't think I'm ready for that. Yeah. Yeah. And she said, we were just having sex. She had to explain to me that doggy style meant, you know, her on. Yeah, it was very, wow. it was embarrassing because I was in high school. Yeah. And um, that story got around. It did? Yeah, yeah, yeah. She, she told everyone or you she, did? She, I wasn't going to tell. Do you know the, okay. Wow. Two, two embarrassing, Whoa. that was embarrassing in high school. Yeah. You know, the first, the most embarrassing, the first, the first girl, I, <laughs> the first girl I went down on fell asleep. <laughs> Come on. Maybe you didn't go down far enough. <laughs> <laughs> what were you, licking her belly button or something? <laughs> That'll put anyone to sleep. Jesus. Yeah, she, she fell asleep, dude. She fell asleep. What? <laughs> you How do you know? Did she close up? Because I heard... Oh, God. <laughs> sure, her father wasn't under the bed? God. I was like, oh. hey, Mike, can I tell you what my first thought was? Sounds like she was on a respirator, if I'm being honest. <laughs> <laughs> Who are you licking, Darth Vader? <laughs> <laughs> The first thing I thought was, I did this so well. Yeah. She came and went to sleep. Oh, like I knocked okay. her out. That so you was, rationalized. I was so you good. Just, at, you I were was so good. You licked her out. Yeah. Now, granted, she had had a couple of things. To, she'd been drinking a little Some bit. Cocktails. Right, right, right. But still, not a great confidence booster. Do you know what I mean? Well, I do know what you mean. And yeah. this is real. I had a girl fall asleep on me while doing that to me once. No. Like, I'm not kidding. Fell freaking asleep. How did you know? Like, what was your first Because I'm just sign? laying there, and the movement, stopped. the head movement just stopped, and she just stopped, and I'm just laying there. I thought, okay, maybe she needs a break. Yeah. And I'm was waiting. She, she was still just down there? Yeah, she was. Oh, she fell asleep with it in the mouth oleo. And so, A, it was weird yeah. And B, it made me feel like, what kind of lame lover am I? Like, but, how lame am I that a woman would fall asleep? Yeah. And, like, it it was sort of devastating. Can I ask, did it slow down like somebody had run out of batteries? You <sighs> sort know what I mean? Of. It was like, a, like, you know, like one of those, yeah. like one of the things at Disney that goes, wah, wah, and just kind of slows down? It was this. You ever been on an airplane, and you look at the person beside you, and they're like this, or like... Yeah, 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 yeah. It was that, all right? The passenger between my legs fell asleep it's, over and over. What's your move? Did you wake her up? Did, I finally, I was were so you, mortified. Were you here? No, this was, a, this was, um, this was probably about 20... Five years ago. So you left. You were at her place or No, we were at my old at my old place that I had way back then. Yeah. We were in my bedroom and she, I just laid there. I didn't know what to do. I'd never had some you know, when you're having sex with someone, 
it's traditionally super exciting. Yeah. You kind of don't want it to end. Yeah. It's like, you're, you you know, you're doing something to her. She does something to you. You flip around. It's like, you don't want it to end. And to Your just turn to, was the name of this uh, was song. <laughs> right, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There <laughs> <laughs> it, yeah. it took this to trigger our memory. Yeah, yeah. So you're at you're you know it's 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 like running in the Olympics. You don't stop and have a nap. No. You, you see that finish line and you're like, let's go. Yeah. That's what sex should be like. Yep. And old uh, Salmonella Sally fucking fell asleep on the mushroom cap. And I don't think you'll hear that in any Nancy Drew yeah. novel. <laughs> old narcolepsy nanny. Yeah. The wow. narcolepsy. Yeah. What did I say? Sal- salmonella. Sal- salmonella. Listen, if your if your penis is giving salmonella, <laughs> you yeah. might be a redneck. Maybe maybe yeah. I poisoned <laughs> yeah. her. Yeah. <laughs> salmonella. But yeah. yeah, dude, it was it was like it was devastating. So when you say your gal fell asleep, because with a woman, right? There's no there's no projectile. There's no phallus. So right. If you fall asleep on there, it's sort of like laying on a flat pillow. Hard to fall asleep with something in your mouth, right? Like that. So this woman just like, and I'm like, dude, and, and, crush her. And did, did, I'm, I'm just curious, like, did you were you like, excuse me, or were you like, hey, I gotta go? Or were you like, like, I laid there for like, like, like just silent for about 30, 40 seconds because I, I thought maybe she was just. You know, sometimes people tease. There's yeah, kind of game yeah. play. Oh, is this her move? Yeah, is this her kind of, you I'm know. I'm pretending to be asleep. Yeah, yeah. And, and then nothing. And yeah. I kind of like, and I was like, and then I just kind of like, hey. Yeah. And she's like, oh, oh, yeah, sorry. And then she just crawled up and went to sleep. So I didn't have time to. Yeah. But it wounded me. It wounded me deep. That is a tough one. Yeah. Because then you have to start, you're, there's questions about your own penis. Like, right? Like what? Like, what kind of questions? Well, does my penis put people to sleep? So I got one of those sleeping penises? Which, listen, dude, is can really be useful. I mean, some people need help sleeping. You know, there's millions of people in this country who, who can't get to sleep, and maybe your penis is the answer. There's nights when I can't sleep. Well, dude, get to it. You better start taking some yoga classes. Yeah, yeah. Or, or just get, like, one of those... Um, you know the penis in, in longer, elong, elonger. Wait, now what are you saying? Elonger, elongator, elongator. Stre- That's the right word. Stretcher, elongator. I barely know her. <laughs> stretcher, stretcher, penis stretcher. Yeah, right? is this the name of our next country song? Penis stretcher, yeah. I think, is the next yeah. one. Yeah, yeah. But I think so. But they have those. I think those. Uh, they have those those things that stretch it out. Yeah. They also. You could probably get surgery nowadays. But wait a minute, what what did your girl say? Did you wake her up and say, hey, what's the deal there, sleepyhead? Okay, so here's what happened. Sleepyhead, that's what I should have named that's what my you girlfriend. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> hey, sleepyhead, yeah. let's go. Let's go. Open the peepers. Yeah. Let's go, sleepyhead. So my girl, we were, okay, I, I remember I was a freshman in high school. And so I, I didn't know. I honestly thought she was just deep. Like I had put her to sleep, but not in a good way. Right. Okay. I had put her to sleep. And my buddy was with another girl in, in the house. Okay. And um, I went and I was like, hey. And he goes, you ready to go? Yeah, I'm ready to go. And he goes, how'd it go? I go, I fucking I put her to sleep. And he was like. <laughs> And I, he was way more sexually advanced than I, he yeah. was. The, he's the dude who taught me that when you use your finger on a girl, I thought you were just oh, supposed to stick it. I thought don't you were just supposed it. to stick it in and leave it there. Oh, okay. Yeah. Like you were taking her temperature or something. Right. I think I did too. Actually. I thought it was this situation. Yeah. You just leave it. You leave it until it's done. Yeah. Like you're cooking something. Yeah. Yeah. Right. He was the guy who told me, he was like, what do you, don't do that. I was like, what do you mean? He was like, there's gotta be movement. I was like, good note and yeah. so when i left there i told him like i put her to sleep and he was like what i go well, i had never gone down on something before and i went down on her and like 10 minutes in i heard her sleeping and he why, was like why are you whispering <laughs> <laughs> dude, dude, 
fucking, you're creeping me the fuck out, bro. <laughs> Can we just fucking talk about this? Like, fucking man, what are you, a librarian? Let's go. Spit it out there, well, sleepyhead. <laughs> It's getting quieter and quieter. And then we got a, I don't know, I'm like, let's go, church mouse. God. Oh, fuck. Need a hearing aid to keep up with you. <laughs> Here. Oh, my God, dude. All right, try again. I have the earphones I on. <laughs> <laughs> I was trying to bring us into the story because when I was talking to him, I oh, was shit, whispering. Did I, I, I fucked up the drama. No, I was whispering. Okay. But I don't have to whisper because we're not in the story. And you're not eating pussy. Yeah, either. yeah. So I told. <laughs> now it sounds like you have fucking <laughs> SARS. <laughs> you do. Clear the mucus. Get the fucking range up. Let's fucking talk to me. I'm right here, guy. Wow. God damn. Okay. Jesus. Well, I told him. I was like, yeah. I put, I put her to sleep. Is it as good as a story if I'm not whispering? Yeah, it's a little loud. Yeah. yeah. Pre- <laughs> Dial it down, all yeah, right? Dial bit. it down, yeah. Nacho. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so that what happened. Yeah, I mean, maybe it's better if I tell yeah. you. Adds to the tension. Yeah. But I said, I said to him, I put her to sleep. And he was like, what do you mean? I go, well, I went down on her for like 10 minutes and I heard her. By the way, your face is wetter than her pussy right now. I mean, you're, <laughs> well, your I, eyes are like, when I, it's like you're a squirter with your I, eyes. Dude, I wish. Out this way? Yeah. Sorry, I didn't, mean to, I didn't mean to interrupt. That's okay. Keep going. He said to me, that's not supposed to happen. And I go, what do you mean? And he was like, well, like, she's supposed to enjoy herself. Like, but not go to, when you're, something's happening to you that you like, does it put you to sleep? And I was like, no. He goes, what you, how do you usually fall asleep? I go, when I'm really relaxed or like bored. And he was like, yeah, this was not. And I go, we'll find out. I said, I think I, she really liked it. And I found it in school. Her friends were like, one of her friends came up to me and I thought I had escaped all embarrassment. And one of her friends came up to me. And she was like, hey, you want to come over Friday night? I've been having trouble sleeping. <laughs> oh, shit. And I was like, damn it. Well, I guess this isn't a secret anymore. You should have gave her my name. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Apparently, I could put her to yeah, sleep dude, real I, fast. I want to help you. Yeah. Yeah. It was, wow. uh, by the way, that, that I really do. I was whispering it up. Yeah, you were really. I was back in it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was back in it. You don't, uh, when you are on stage. Yeah. You don't, you tell stories, but they're pretty out there. Do you ever bring like real stories on stage? I did once. I did once. I, I, I think a couple of times I have, but very rarely. Right. Because what I love about watching you is that anything can happen in your stories on stage. Right. That's what you've said. You've set up the parameters for like, there's no rules. No rules. No rules to my stories. Yeah. But. You tell them, it's one of my favorite types of comedy, absurd comedy told in a very serious, straightforward, matter-of-fact manner. Yeah, just tell it like it's a real story, even though it's not. Even though, and I, when I watch you, I watch the audience, and some people, every time, think, oh, this is a story. This actually happened. They do? Every Good. fucking time. Like the story you told the other night, about the other day about hiking. Yeah. You're at Jeremiah's. Yeah. Right. I know people were like, oh, this is a story about he was actually hiking up the hill. Yeah. Yeah. It, it's, it's, you tell it so seriously and so convincingly. It's one of my favorite things. It is. Oh, thanks. Yeah. About watching you do stand up. Yeah. 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 yeah I, I, well, I like, I like convincing people it's real. And then when you throw in something so oddball. Yeah. They can't differentiate if it's part of the reality or the thing. But in my head, I guess it's a bit selfish. I'm laughing inside. So I kind of go either they're going to get it or they're not. Yeah. But I'm, I'm laughing inside. So selfishly, half of my reason for doing comedy is to amuse myself. But I think that's what makes the best comics. It does. I, I, I think if you're doing your comedy for other people, it's not going to be as good. You're huh. doing you're doing what you think is funny. Yeah, oh yeah. To me, that's what people want to watch. Yeah. Right? If you wrote a joke 
because you were like, oh, I think they're going to like this. Yeah. You're going to be writing it from somebody else's point of view. That's true. I didn't think of it like that. Do you know what I mean? It's one of my reasons. Like, yeah. like, like, it's why there's some guys that I'll always watch. Like, I'll always watch you because, because you're, you look like you're having a good time. Always. I'm all, I have to have a good time. Me too. You know, everything we do in life is tough. Like, you know, it's not, I'm not saying it's a grind. Like, we, every, everything's, we have a good time. But you, you always know when you get up to go do stand-up, it's guaranteed a good time. Yeah. I find even if I'm in a in a bad mood, like like yesterday I did a show. Yeah. And for some reason I woke up real early, like 4.30 in the morning. I was tired. I had to go to a whole bunch of meetings. Then at 5 o'clock I had to play racquetball for three hours. Why? Because I love it. I love I play every week. Racquetball? Racquetball. So I played intensely for three hours, yeah. doubles. And then, you know, three hours nonstop. Doubles racquetball? Doubles racquetball. Mm -hmm. I get off stage. I get off the racquetball court at 740. I have to be on stage at 815. So I don't shower. I I followed you. Yeah. I go right to the, I go right to the racket, to the comedy club. Yep. Still sweaty because I like it that I'm pumped up. But yesterday I was so exhausted. I, I didn't get a chance to s- spend much time with you yet last night at the club because I was so exhausted. I had to come home. Yeah. But I took that exhaustedness onto the stage and kind of did an act, like kind of using my exhausted state. But I still had fun because I tapped into that. You know how much when you go on at the store. And by the way, side note, we should write a movie about a competitive racquetball league. Really? Do you play? Uh, my dad was like a <sighs> any, stud. Oh. Age 40, age 50, age 60, he won like the, all those oh, competitions, right? I love it. Um, and whenever he used to come, we'd take him to LA Fitness and play oh, racquetball. I love it. But when you get on stage, like at the store, yeah. are you a blank slate? Or you have an idea? Or in these stories that you tell... When you're on the road doing an hour, yeah, are you like the, I have these four stories I'm going to tell, or are you just because you seem so in the moment? And oh. some people are geniuses like that, where they feel in the moment all the time, but it's not. Or, or I know a lot of yours is like, what percentage do you go back and forth? So last night, last night it was blank slate. I just went up. I, I thought to myself, I'm going to go up on stage. And tell the audience I got in a fight with my girlfriend because I made, I'm a coleslaw nut and I made her coleslaw and she didn't like it. That's all I went on stage with. And then when I got out there, it, I just filled in all the blanks. Yeah. From a coleslaw story. But it was so, it was so funny. Was it? Yeah. I, it was so well, thank funny. You. I, but, but, but like, that's the thing. Is it, you know, it's master class level to be able to do that and to have your stories and jokes or whatever you want to call them be structured as well as those are wow. like it's really it's really thank it's you dude. really it's really awesome to watch well thank you holy yeah. smoke yeah 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 i always wondered like how much of that like if you go on the road and do an hour yeah when i go on the road it's more of a show show because folks are coming to a comedy club to see a feature an MC right. and a headliner. So I do a bit more of a more traditional show on right. the road, but I always slip in some of the wild stuff, you know, just, yeah. but, but I do have to have a set cause I need those shows to be more consistent. So people will buy tickets. So, yeah. And I just don't, I don't want them leaving thinking, Oh, that was sort of experimental and weird. You know what's crazy is I feel the same type of like, Oh, they're buying tickets specifically to see me. Yeah. I f- would feel weird to be like, hey, I'm just going to do an hour of totally new jokes. Yeah. Even though sometimes, actually. So, sometimes you, know, you will. Do you know what I've been doing on Friday night late shows? What? I take mushrooms before I go on stage. Oh, what's that like? <sighs> I will tell you, I am having so much fun. What? I'm really? Ha- Friday night late shows. If you come see me. I got to see this. You come see me on Friday night late shows. Yeah. I'm taking mushrooms. Like how many mushrooms? Like how deep are you? Between, on a scale of one to ten, how how are, high are you? Have you ever been a mushroom guy? 
Not me. All right. Well, between those of you who are listening, between two and three grams. So on a scale of one to ten, what's that high like? Is uh, it intense I'm, or is it mild? I'm not like, I'm not full on hallucinating. Okay. But I'm fucked up. Yeah. Okay. I'm fucked up. Okay. And so, you know what it is for me is like, if I'm stuck on a joke. Yeah. Sometimes one, trying, to, trying it on mushrooms opens up so many other doors that in a spot that I'm kind of stuck on a joke I don't like, but I keep opening the same fucking door. Yeah. I don't know why my brain isn't letting me try something else. Yeah, yeah. The mushroom's like, fuck that joke. What about this? The other night at the comedy store yeah. on Sam Tripoli's show, yeah. I was whacked out on mushrooms. And I was oh, telling this story. I, I saw that. I was telling the story that, I, and my goal was to see, I wonder if I can tell the story from beginning to end this high. But there were two parts in the story that I've just been fucking stuck on. Yeah. And I solved them both that night. And you were happy with them? So happy. I told oh, them wow. I told them last night on both sets. I wanted to make sure I wasn't just mushroom happy, that I was yeah, happy, yeah. happy, right? Yeah. I told them both. I told them once at the store, once at the improv. And I was like, fuck, well, what do you fucking wow. know? Yeah. But now let me ask you this on always being the devil's advocate, of yep. course. Do you now worry that maybe now you might have to lean on the mushrooms to help you? Or can you go, I just needed it that once? Or well, he, what if it becomes a bad habit and it becomes detrimental? I So if I start doing it on every show, yeah. I'll check myself. Okay. But the Friday Night Late Show, I feel like, and you know Friday Night Late Shows are... yeah. Sometimes need a little extra boost of energy. Yeah. Oh, so you just do it on that night. Just that That's night. mushroom night. That's mushroom night. Just oh, Friday Night wow. Late Show. And, and I'll definitely, I go in with two or three stories or two or three jokes that I feel like, ah, that could use a little zhuzh. Yeah. And then some, I just talk to the audience. But do you have to time it? Because it's not like you yes. take mushrooms and it's like, boom, you're high. Like, isn't it like an hour or something before they kick in? They usually like, start hitting me about 40 minutes after. So, so you have to eat them, knowing when you're going on. Yeah, and, yeah. And do you want to be into the high, or do you want it to sort of be kicking when you're up I, there? I, I want the audience to see me sober first. So you, they're, you're there for the them. transition. I want them oh, to see wow. the whole thing. Do they know if you told them? Yes, and they know when they're coming in. They know the whole situation. Oh, wow. And, and That's pretty wild. I have some people come on Mushrooms. Yeah. I have it, it, Because my show's on the road now are different. I just travel with my son. Yeah. And um, so he he does like a couple minutes up front. I do like 70. He and I do a Q&A. Oh, because wow. Because so, so many of my jokes in the past have been about him. My crowd feels like they know him. They know your kid. Right. So the Q&A is kind of He's fun. He's your only him. kid, right? I have three kids. I have three kids. Have three oh. Kids. My two oldest ones, but I have old kids. My oldest son is 31 and my daughter's 29. Okay, got it. And so... I used to only tell stories about them. Yeah. But nobody knew who I was. And so by the time anybody found out who I was, Jacob was the only one still at the house. Oh, I see. You know, okay. you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So <laughs> so he got all the all the embarrassing yeah. stories about him. But um but I'll do that and he knows, I'll tell him. If I'm on stage for cuz I was in Royal Oak and my sh I was at a, like an hour 50. You do an hour 50 on mushrooms? Does it, and are you doing that because of the mushrooms? Like you lose track of time? A little bit. But, but oh, I. Wow, that's a long show. If I see people getting up and leaving, I would walk out. But everybody's there. They, they stay with everybody's you. Everybody's there. Because wow. it's a little weird. And mushroom shows are really interactive. And I'll say to say, if you have a question, raise your hand. You can ask me anything. I'll have an answer for you. And some people ask real weird questions. Wow. Like, why is the sky blue? Or how long have turtles been alive? Or, and, you know, and some people will just ask me questions about my life and my act. But on mushrooms, and I find so much material doing that. All right, before you go. Yeah. Bef not go, but before we go any further. Yeah. Tell them immediately where they can find out about your comedy tour. Well, ComedianJoshWolf.com. Com jo ComedianJoshWolf.com. So now... Go see him on any night, but if you want to have a really wild time, Fridays. go see him on Fridays. Okay, keep yeah. going. It, 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 you know what it is also, man? And I feel like, I, I feel like as long as I'm doing this, yeah. I, want, I want to walk down every road. I want to, you know, yeah, I, I, can, I hear you. I, do you know what I, so. You only come through life once. What am I, what am I, you know what I did also for a year? Yeah. For three months? All I did was sit down the whole time. 
I never took the mic out of the stand three months. Okay. For the next three months, I stood in front of the mic, but I never took it out. Right. For the next three months, I held it almost like Burr. And for the next three months, I paced. Yeah. Just, and I, I did basically the same jokes. Yeah. But you know what it showed me? In parts of my stories, they work better when I'm sitting down. Right, right. And so if, if you see me in a story where in one part I go to sit down, that's because during those three months, what I learned is that part of the story works better with me sitting down. Yeah, yeah. But this is what I mean. I, it's what I love about what we do. Yeah. It's, it's always fun, ever-changing. You can always just invent something for yourself to do that keeps you entertained. Yeah, you got to. If you don't, you just sort of creatively die, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Look, you know, yeah. one of my favorite things about what we do is, and that other people understand is I love the shit giving. Yeah. I, it's one of my favorite things about comics. And if you're a comic and I don't know you, I still feel like I can give you, yeah. I can make fun of you. Yeah. But you know what's been lost a little bit? When I first started, you would make fun of the person that you follow. You would right. say something. Yeah. This is not a thing people like anymore. Really? I do it all the time. I did it with you last night. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> when I introduced you. Yeah, I know. Do you remember what I said? I, I, I don't remember exactly I what I said. So I finished my act. You were coming up yeah, next. I yeah. said, ladies and gentlemen, I work with so many great comedians all over the country, all through the years. And I want to tell you about this next guest. Out of every comic I work with, he's probably the most humble comedian I've ever worked with. And case in point, he would never tell you this, so I'm going to tell you. I write all his material. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then you came out. Like, it's fun, it's fun to this goof is, with the other comedians, it's right? It's why, like, it's, it's part it's of... It's camaraderie, yeah. A hundred percent. And you're telling me there's people that don't like that anymore? Do you know what? Yeah, you know, when I first started Open Mics... That was part of the deal. Yeah. Is that you made fun of the person who you just yeah. saw. Yeah. And not only that, honestly, I only did it to people that I liked. Yeah. Or, I'm not making fun of somebody I don't like. I don't, that's not. Yeah, you're right. There are people like that. It feels, when I make fun of somebody I don't like, it feels like I'm really making fun yeah, of Yeah. You, you can tear it in the inflection. Yeah. I'm like, yeah, that felt real. There are, you're right, there's guys like that. I remember when I used to MC when I first moved to Hollywood because yeah. nobody knew me, so I couldn't get regular spots, so they would MC me, which I didn't like because yeah. I, you know, I just came down from Canada and I was a AAA headliner up there, and now I'm MCing, but I, I, I knew I had to have my place in line. So right. I did it and I was grateful for it, but it only lasted about six months. But in order to make it interesting for me, now I'm in Hollywood. And I'm with all the top players in the comedy industry, but I didn't know any of them because I was from Canada. Mm -hmm. So here they were kind of big news. So I would bring these guys up on stage and just to amuse myself, this next guy coming up, uh, me and him used to go fishing together. And I'll never forget, one time we got snagged on a log. Let's bring him up, yeah. Donnie Smith. And I remember half of them would go up and go, I, don't, I never went fishing with this guy. He's just an asshole. So I didn't, like they literally get mad and they were at mad. me, and yeah. it just made me want to do it more because I was like, "You fucking when relax." You, when you first started here, who were the people that you were starting with? Uh, so when I was when I was starting here, it was like Louis C.K., Dave Chappelle, oh boy. Uh, Dane Cook. Um, and were you were you like a Laugh Factory dude? Were you a improv? Were you a I did store? mostly the Laugh Factory back then, and I would have done the other ones, but I got so many gigs. Like, I just had an open door there. They said, yeah. you know, I was, I was working there every weekend, every night, so I didn't need to go anywhere else. And then eventually, you know, all the other clubs just asked me to come, and I was like, you know what? So now sometimes I'll do three clubs a night. But And by the way, it's such a crazy thing for those clubs to all be within, like, whatever, a mile of each other. Oh, yeah. But to, but to have completely different audiences. Mm -hmm. Like the laugh, the store audience, the improv, and the Laugh Factory couldn't be more different. Yeah, they're all the different. Yeah. The Laugh Factory feels more like a road gig, doesn't it? For me, it feels more yeah. like, like as far as the reception you get, and I don't mean that in a bad way. I yeah. feel like the laughs are easier is not the right word, but like it feels more I, like the Ice House, which is like, oh, this, I'm going to have a great set tonight. Yeah, um, I don't know. Yeah, I, I don't. 
I don't. By the way, that's not a negative on the laugh. No, no, it's, not at it all. It feels good to go in there. And oh yeah, crush. that's a concussion. Yeah, there. Yeah, yeah. I, I don't know if it feels like a road gig to me because it's like right here in town and I live here. Right. So, but yeah, I, I would agree that each one has its own energy. That's for sure. Like like the store feels really hip. Yeah, the laugh factory feels sort of more middle of the road, like tourists, and and then the the improv to me feels it's it's the toughest one. It feels sort of really. I always struggle there, but I like it because I struggle. Sometimes the, you find your best stuff when you're struggling. The uh, the imp- Listen, I would tell you for sure, those Wednesday night one a.m. sets at the comedy store in the OR. Yeah. In front of eight people who have seen three hours of comedy. Yeah, it could be great. If you're making them laugh, those are funny jokes. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Oh, yeah. They're, they're keepers. The, and yeah. and, and though, because those people, they're like, I bought the ticket. I'm watching the whole show. You know, <laughs> I don't care if yeah. I've been here for fucking four hours. I'm watching the whole show. But I agree with you. Sometimes I love those small rooms. Yeah. I, I For a couple reasons. One, you know, sometimes I find myself getting a little too performative in front of big, okay. bigger crowds. Yeah, yeah. And I want to make sure, and those small crowds remind me just to talk. I don't need to raise my voice. I have a microphone. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Well, sometimes you'll go to a club for a weekend, and you're like, they'll come, oh, Saturday sold out, and you kind of go, oh, it's like, okay, I got to do my, my thing. But when you get in there on a Thursday night, and it's only like half full, you sort of feel like, oh, I can be kind of free and loosey-goosey. Like, it's... It's not that you don't give a great show on Saturday, but there's something about that half crowd that makes you feel a little freer to just yeah. yeah. It feels it you it feels more intimate. Yeah, it, it does. Re- I really agree with you. Yeah, I, I think some of my best, and not only that, I think Thursday night crowds are comedy fans. It's not date night. They weren't yeah. just looking for something to do. Yeah, it's if more, they're there there on Thursday, yeah. they like you. Yeah, and they like comedy, and that's why they're there. And speaking of you, oh. Are you going to pick up a picture of me? Words from a wooden shoe. Oh, let's do it. So this is our closing bit. Okay. And what we do... Do you have two of those? Do you ever wear them? Just one. Okay. Yeah, I got mm-hmm. them from a pirate. Right. Yeah, that explains it. And what we do, guy, is you reach into the... This is an authentic Dutch clog. You mm-hmm. reach in there, you grab a word, mm-hmm. and see if the word brings back a memory or a story from your life. Okay. Right. Words from a wooden shoe with Josh Zachary Wolf. What's your word, guy? Gun. Here we go. What do we got? Okay. Wow, that's a tight one. Yeah. Does it say gun or gum? I don't have my glasses on. Oh, great. <laughs> Thank you, son of a bitch. You son of a bitch. <laughs> it actually says bun. Oh. No. <laughs> No, it says gun. Okay, yeah. it says gun. Okay. Man. And so I'm... <laughs> and I was going to ask you to lick my pussy, but you'd probably pass out, so forget it. Tell me... No, you would pass out. Yeah. Not, oh. not me. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Um, tell me something again. So what's the assignment? So it's just if it elicits a memory or a story from your life, does that word inspire something from your life that involves a gun or gun-related or... I, I will say this. I'm not, first of all, I'm not a real, I have a gun. Yeah. I'm not a gun guy. Yeah. Uh, but I will tell you that the word, anytime I hear the word gun, for whatever reason, it brings me back to Wayne's world. Oh, okay. Where sh- his ex-girlfriend gives him a gun rack. Right. And he says, I don't even have a gun, much less what he says, much less something to necessitate a rack. Right. For whatever reason, yeah. whenever I hear the word, gu- I was a big Wayne's World fan. Yeah. For whatever reason, when I hear that word gun, it, that joke pops right into my wow. head. Wow. Are you mental? Yeah. Yeah. That's, I don't know if that fits what you were no, looking for. No, that's the thing. It can be yeah. whatever you want. But that I word mean, always makes me think of that joke. Well, the, you know what? The upside to that story is that you said it. It reminds you of a joke. So gun, which we usually associate with violence and yeah. murder and death, to you equals joke and Wayne's, funny, Wayne's which world. is a nice thing. Yeah. yeah so yeah. that's a nice story. Ladies and gentlemen, before we go, Josh, yeah. please tell the folks... Where they can find you, where they can see your tour, where they can get on your social media. Comedianjoshwolf.com is the for the tour dates. I do a podcast with my son called Hey Man. 
I will tell you, to me, it's the most fun I've ever had. The 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 podcast. The, he every podcast he seems to admit something. Like last podcast, he admitted he was like, "Do you remember? Did I ever tell you I used to steal your car and do donuts in the Macy's parking lot?" <laughs> oh, wow. I'm like, "What? Whoa, yeah, that's cool." So, so there's a lot of that. Wow. Um, I in on a little bit of a serious note, I've had dads and kids come up to me and say, "Your podcast is inspirational and aspirational Aww. because the relationship is super cool to watch." But we talk. There's a lot of generation gap stuff where his idea of hip hop and my idea of hip hop are two different things. Yeah, that's cool. He teaches me where I found out what cap and no cap means. Okay. Which I he teaches me a lot of stuff, but it's a it's a lot of fun. Wow. Uh, so it's Hey Man with three A's because that's how I yeah he told me that's how I say it. He says, I say, hey, man. Well, catch Josh, catch his, his uh, podcast, catch his, go see his comedy, especially that Friday, Friday night late show, show. Yep, Friday late wherever show. you may be. And all, all your cities are listed on your website. It's all listed on the website. It's a good time. We have a lot of fun out Listen, there. Listen, since you got the, uh, the axe in your hand, do uh-huh. you want to say goodbye to the folks with a little song? Yeah. I mean, just you. This is, this is your time to sing. I'm going to yeah. shut my pie hole. sounds pretty good right excellent thank you for joining us on the harlan's highway we've had a lot of fun and later we might get just a little gay and when i say just a little gay i mean an oral opportunity and more for him and not no i meant for me (laughs) theme music ladies and gentlemen thanks for being here on the hard on highway (laughs) until next time chicken chow mein baby put that fucking thing down immediately holy god here comes old (laughs) sleepyhead I'm a good old country boy, and I got a country heart. A Walmart sleeping bag where I do my country farts. You city boys spend your millions on fancy sports cars. Us country boys can drop panties with our thrift store guitars. Well, I'm a country boy at heart, and that's all you need to know. If you don't like a cornfield, then just fuck off and go. I'm a country boy at heart, and that's all you need to know. You city boy, see your therapist and manicure your toes. If you want me, you got me behind the silo. And I'll make you squeal like a hog, and the townsfolk all know. I'm a country boy at heart. I'm a country boy at heart. I'm a country boy at heart. And that's all you need to know. That was beautiful.